Welcome back everyone. Today we're heading to the most southerly country in Africa to see what tales it has in store for us. Well, I'll be honest, I already know, obviously. But let me tell you, these are up there with some of the best we've done in this whole series, I think. You can believe me when I say that because I don't always say that. So. Here we go then. My name is Danny Burke and this is the top 10 scary South African urban legends. Starting off at number 10 now we have Pinky Pinky. This is a creature steeped in the mist of folklore, known to many South Africans as a symbol of fear, rape and torment. It's said to be half man, half woman. Its origins date back centuries in Zulu culture. It's said to have rose tinted skin and eyes with shocking pink hair. It's said to prey on adolescent girls, especially ones wearing pink, both in real life and in their nightmares. People say it tries to corner a girl and then speaks to her in a musical woman's voice and asks if the girl will play or be friends with Pinky Pinky. Some parts of South Africa are dismissive of this but authorities do take reports of the creature seriously. Headmasters have even closed down schools in the past to protect their pupils from the so-called myth. Police investigations are not uncommon when reports of the Pinky Pinky come in. Perhaps real rapists and murderers have contributed to the spread of this myth but many locals will tell you that there's no smoke without fire, and the Pinky Pinky really is out there. Next up at number 9 now, we have the Ghostly Horseman. In the Takai Forest lies the Takai Manor. The story goes that in the mid 1800s it was owned by a man called Petrus Eckstein. He loved wild drunken parties and for him, New Year's Eve was the greatest party of them all. One New Year's Eve, Petrus challenged his son Frederick in front of all of the guests. He made a bet that Frederick should ride his favourite horse up the steep steps of the manor and into the house. His son did this and all the guests cheered. As he went back down the stairs though, a slave rang the bell bell to signal midnight. The horse got spooked and tumbled down the steps, dragging Frederick to his death. This violent end is said to have bound Frederick's soul to the house, specifically in the way that he died. In the years since then, people who have worked or visited the house report hearing strange sounds, drunken laughter or the echoing of horse hooves. Then there are some who swear they've seen a man in old fashioned clothes galloping along on a horseback in the forest, especially on New Year's Eve or in the early hours of the morning. At number eight now we have Highway Sheila. Residents of Chatsworth will know all about this famous ghost. According to them, Sheila was a young Indian girl who was trying to flag down people to help fix her broken car by the side of the N2 highway. A group of men pulled over, they sexually assaulted her, murdered her and then left her by the side of the road. Her spirit is now said to be bound to that stretch of road, full of vengeance and hate for all of the living. She now does what was done to her, terrorizing or even killing innocent people on the road. One story involves a young man who picked up a hitchhiker called Sheila. The man offered to take her home and noticed the temperature drop in his car when the woman got in. He offered her his coat which she accepted. He then dropped her off at her home nearby, at which point she wanted to return the coat. The man insisted that she keep it and said he would fetch it in the morning. When he went back to the house the following day, a middle aged woman answered the door and the man asked for Sheila. The woman was baffled and said that Sheila doesn't live here anymore. The man said he had just dropped her off the night before. The woman said that was impossible as Sheila had died years before. She told him where her grave was as proof. He rushed to the spot and there, draped over the gravestone, was the jacket he had given to Sheila. Next up at number 7 now we have the Mermaid of the Karoo. The Great Karoo is a large desert in South Africa. It doesn't rain very often there at all. They say that in parts of the Karoo there are 5 year old children who have never seen rain before. It didn't always used to be like this though. 250 million years ago the whole area was apparently sea. Today you can find fossilized shells in the desert as evidence. This seems to tie in with a local legend that deep below the ground, in water pools, in caves, there lies a mermaid. Legend says that she has lived there ever since a great flood washed her there from the sea many years ago. When the waters receded, she was trapped there. In local folklore, people have seen the mermaid for generations. She lures them in by promising their heart's desires before sending them to a watery grave. This urban legend picked up pace when people pointed pointed out that the ancient sand rock paintings in the driest part of Karoo Desert seem to depict mermaid like creatures on the walls. Skeptics argue otherwise but still, the legend of the Karoo mermaid has been around for a very long time now and may continue for just as long. Moving on to number 6 now, we have the anti-occult police. You've heard of normal police, traffic police and undercover police but have you heard of anti-occult police? In the 1980s and early 1990s, South Africa saw the birth of a real police squad whose sole role it was to fight back against satanic crimes. The founder of the unit was a Dr. Cobus Jonker, also known as the Hound of God. He said that in the 
1990s, he was investigating more than 250 cases a year and believed that there were thousands of Satanists active in South Africa. It was their job to make sure people who practice Wicca were doing so without harming anyone else around them. There were documented cases of some traditional healers harvesting organs from people in the name of their belief or simply for money. They often believed the victim must be alive when the organs are harvested and they will try to find the youngest and most innocent victims possible. The pain and hormones released is apparently what gives the organ its power. In 2006, the police unit was officially dissolved, although some people in South Africa feel they simply went underground to continue a very real fight against the occult. Next up at number 5 now we have the lightning bird. This is a mythical creature and a number of different tribal folklores in South Africa. It's said to take the form of a black and white bird which is the size of a person. It summons thunder and lightning using its wings and talons. It's also vampiric and has an insatiable appetite for human blood. The bird is usually the servant of a witch or witch doctor and attacks their enemies. Some say it manifests itself as lightning to men and a bird to women. Although people fear the lightning bird attacking them and sucking their blood dry, some people hope to actually hunt it themselves. You see, the fat of the lightning bird is said to be a great source of fuel or an ingredient for traditional medicine. However, killing it is said to be no easy task, as the lightning bird is immune to gunshots or stabbing. You can't poison it or drown it, it can only be killed by fire. So, if you've ever wanted to hunt down and kill a vampiric lightning bird that can suck your blood dry, now you know how. Moving on to number 4 now, we have the Greenpoint Lighthouse. Built in 1924, the red and white striped Greenpoint Lighthouse is the oldest working beacon in South Africa. With all of that history, it may not come as a surprise to some people that the building is famously haunted. The story goes that the tower is inhabited by a one-legged spirit simply called Daddy West. There was actually a lighthouse keeper by the name of West who worked there in 1901. Some people believe this adds weight to the claims. Next up at number 3 now we have the Afterlife Prison. Pieter Giesbert van Nudert was the governor of Cape Town in the early 1700s. During his time, four soldiers tried to flee his harsh rule. They were imprisoned and when they tried to escape, they were sentenced to death. The governor refused to overturn the sentencing and also attend the hanging. The last soldier to receive his sentence cursed the governor with his dying breath. When officers officers went to report to the governor that the execution had gone as planned, they found him dead. He was slumped in his chair with a look of sheer terror on his face. Locals blamed the curse, but some people went even further with it. They believed the curse was not only to kill him, but to also tie his soul to the prison forever. These days, visitors to the Castle of Good Hope have reported seeing him roaming the hallways. They say he seems totally unaware of his situation as a ghost and just stares at tourists as if they are new prisoners ready to be executed for their crimes. Next up at number 2 now we have the Spook House. This very old house in Cape Town has become known over the years simply as the Spook House. The story goes that in the 1970s the basement in this house was home to a cult group. They practiced their satanic rituals down here unbeknown to the people at street level. They eventually left worried that their rituals would be attracting too much attention. Although they were now gone, their energy apparently wasn't. Some believe that one of their victims still haunts the place to this day. Over the years a number of visitors have spotted a translucent old man walking around the inside of the house. When he disappears, they hear doors swinging and slamming even though the air is still. And finally at number 1 now we have the ghost of Elsa Cloetti. She was a young Dutch woman who lived in the old Hoot Bay homestead that now houses the Katima restaurant. Back in the 1800s they say she was in love with a British soldier. Her father prohibited her from dating him and so the soldier hung himself from an oak tree near the manor house. The girl apparently died soon after as well. At the time they said it was a broken heart. It's been well over a century and a half since these deaths but people who work there swear they still see the couple. The staff at the restaurant occasionally witness very bizarre occurrences. These include pots flying off their kitchen walls or books flying off their shelves and lights dimming inexplicably. Others have seen the ghostly figure of a woman standing at one of the manor's windows as well as that of a young man lurking near the oak trees staring longingly at the house. The staff all believe this to be so true that they frequently leave meals out for the couple and say they have seen them dying together enjoying what they were denied in life. Well that was creepy but also kind of cool I think. I already wanted to go to South Africa before I made this video and now I also know some really cool urban legend spots to check out too. I'll probably freak myself out though before I ever get there but hey 
It's a thought that counts, I think. Where are we off to next then in the world with our Urban Legends series? You guys let me know. Thanks for watching, guys. My name is Danny Burke, and I will see you all in the next video. <laughs>